Today, we're going to react to Justin Gamble Gamble's response slash apology video to me calling him out as a repack scammer. There's a fair few things to unpack here. I've already seen the video, but I'll watch it again with you guys now. I'll fast forward through some bits. So you don't have to watch him talking the whole time. But there's a few things I want to clarify and give comment on specifically so you guys can see where my comments are going directly. And then also play some other clips from some of his other videos because I think they'll give some context to the whole you know situation as well. But it's a pretty interesting one. So you know, bear with me as we do jump into it. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Justin. Welcome back to Justin Gamble Gamble. There's been some controversy about us, and I want it to be very clear. I have no hate towards Dan, the card man who made the video. Honestly, he made some valid points. I just want to say our side. Do not shoot hate towards the Dan. Appreciate you making the video. All right, good luck. As you can see, they have sped the video up, so the guy's not on crack, so don't, don't think that. But um, some people will comment immediately and say he's trying to suck up to me and all that sort of stuff. That stuff doesn't work on me. I'm going to give you my honest and open thoughts regardless of what this guy is trying to say and all that sort of thing. So take that with a grain of salt when he's maybe thinking that you're, you you guys are thinking that he's um trying to do it to suck up. Fusion. One of the things that he said in the video is someone bought one of our high-end boxes that cost $1,100 and pulled a Christian Watson true RPA. And he showed the comp in his video and it was $61. Yeah, that looks fucking horrible. I'm not going to So I guess it does look fucking horrible. That's why I included it. I'm fairly certain this person spent about $2,500 USD and they lost about 1900 from what I recall. Um, so it's pretty poor form for that poor customer. Um, and this was the comp that I did compare to to the card that he had. Now, I'll put on screen right now the one that was in within his repack. It was a single color, you know, napkin card. Now, I'll get to my thoughts in a sec after he shares a bit more information. <laughs> that does not look good. On bids, $61 in an $1,100 box. That looks fucking terrible. I'm not going to try to run from that. But here's my explanation. We bought that card at Burbank. And around then, you go on card ladder, look up the comps around then. They were going from 580 to like $400. <laughs> So what he's sort of saying here is they bought it at a time when the comps and the pricing tanked in the next, you know, four to five weeks, which is maybe hard to believe seeing a card sell for that much less. And the thing that I want to clarify here is the ones that he showed as being the comparable sales, the patches are so much nicer on these, right? They're multicolored, they're pieces of the numbers, it's stitched, it's all that sort of stuff, right? Whereas the one that was in his repack was a single color white napkin. So I don't think these prices are super comparable, but... Maybe it brings the price of that card up, you know, one, 200 bucks. But even then, like that is still questionable to have into a repack of that price point. He'll share his thoughts on why he thinks that okay, why why that's okay. But I think, you know, he needs to do a bit more there when it comes to making things clear for his customers. I'll share my thoughts on that in a second as well. I'm not sure if many people understand the economics of how a repack works. Unfortunately, not every single person who buys a pack can make profit. There might be other products out there. Now, that's a pretty simple thing to say, but I was shocked at how much pushback I got because people misunderstood what I said in my original video. Some people were saying, well, Daniel, how the F do you think people make money off selling these repacks? Not everybody can get a card worth more than the price of the box. Obviously, right? But my whole point in my original video was it's not okay to sell a $1,100 box and give people $60 cards, right? That was the point I was trying to make. Not that everybody had to get rich off the back of the box. That exist where like say you buy in for 500 bucks at most going to lose $100, get a $400 card, but at max only get like a $700 card. But me personally, look at the channel. <laughs> We're called Gamble Gamble. We like to go for the fucking moonshot. I'm now this is where I think he's let himself down the most, right? He refers to himself as Gamble Gamble. He refers to basically wanting to go big or go home when it comes to selling these repacks. But if you go ahead and watch that live stream and check out the live comment and then also the comments below. Um, a lot of people are really confused, right? And people were questioning what the heck was coming out of these repacks. So that whole gamble gamble element was lost on them. Now, as I did say in my last video, people buying into those repacks are obviously stupid because they're not doing their research, but that doesn't make it okay. So for him as a business, I think the thing that he needs to do, and I did tell him this in the DMs when he did message me before this video dropped, was that, you know, he needs to make it more clear, right? He needs to tell customers, make it clear, have it on screen, have it in your comments, have it in your description, what it is these people are buying into. So... There is no confusion because he can say all he wants that it's called gamble gamble it's a gambling element it's go big or go home it's crystal clear that his customers are very much you know confused it's not good i'm not even trying to make excuses or anything but that stream was kind of a while ago if you've been so it wasn't that long ago i think it was like two or three weeks ago i think there was a third live stream that was since made private that i did mention in my video um the other day and the reason why that's relevant is because what people told me that were in that live stream was that the pushback he got was so bad that moderators were deleting and blocking people and, and they've also since taken the video down. So we don't really know what kind of cards came out from that live stream, but it's um, you know, pretty concerning because whilst it is, you know, a couple of weeks ago, that's not enough weeks ago to think prices have tanked all that much. 
following the channel. We haven't even gone live at all in the past few weeks. And there's a reason for that. It's because what Dan was saying, there's some valid points. We want to get better and make this a better product. That's so it's interesting to hear him say that he hasn't done a live for a few weeks, which is, you know, if he's being genuine here, it's good to sort of see that they have put the halt on it and stopped it, which, you know, might be genuine, right? Because they did make a, a live stream private that I just mentioned where they got so much pushback. So some of you might not believe him when he's saying this, and I think he can himself understand why people might not be taking him seriously when he says that, because it might just be a convenient excuse, but we sort of have to take his word for it in this instance. And if that is the case, it's sort of good to sort of see him take that step back. Now, again, Justin, you can understand why people don't believe you, and I don't think you can, you can sort of begrudge anyone for coming to that conclusion. That's why he fully paused it. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We kind of just like hopped into this. My exposure to breaking is literally just watching people on whatnot and kind of just copying their style. Like I really like watching over. So that's a really interesting comment from him. And I think that's where, again, he's let himself down. It's where so many breakers and repackers let themselves down because they make it up as they go along. They've got no experience. They don't plan it or anything like that. They sort of copy what everyone else is doing. And that's how you end up with these shit shows where these guys sell dog shit stuff to people and they make it out like it's a big deal because they want to sell more really disingenuous and all that sort of stuff, but they're making it up as they go along. And that's really unfortunate. You cannot do that when you're selling $1,100 boxes. Now, this is not me getting on my pedestal or anything like that, as some people like to hate on me for. It's like common sense, guys. You're selling an $1,100 box. You cannot make it up as you go along. And I think he sort of alludes to that being a mistake on his part as well. Time rips. He puts on an entertaining show. At least when I got into this, I was like, all right, I think I can do that. And just jumped into it head first. And we might have made some mistakes. We're never against owning up to it. We will 100% own up to when we fuck up. Another thing that he was saying in the video was, oh, there's no checklist. The checklist and making it more transparent would make this a lot easier. I so this is a really interesting point. So that was one of the main things. And that's my biggest issue that I have with all repackers is that, you know, typically they won't put in a checklist because they don't want you to know what's in there. Because typically that means they've filled the product with dog crap. Now he's got a slightly different position on it. And um, I will stand by my statement that I think a checklist fixes all these issues, but I'll clarify a bit further in a second. I personally, even after like listening to the critique, I'm not a fan of checklists. I'll explain to you my reasoning. When I gamble or I buy a box, the mystery of what am I going to get is also part of the chase for me. That's the fun. That's the thrill. There's going to be people who disagree. They want the checklist. I want to make a product that I actually like. So when I'm opening a box, I don't want to know like, oh yeah, that exact card is in there. I want to be surprised because it makes like the feeling of hitting the chaser feel even cooler because you didn't expect it to be that card. But we are working on making this a lot better. We're building out a set floor, set average set chasers value wise so people know like, what they can get that's the reason why we haven't done anything we're so that sort of makes sense from his perspective and it goes to why he said they stopped doing the live streams because um he doesn't like it right he wants to go through that whole gambling aspect which fits with his within his persona right but again like i said a bit earlier you can understand why people are confused by not seeing that so even if he comes out you know with you know the floor medium and then obviously the high pricing or the hits you can get within the box even if it's just the dollar figures themselves that's going to go a long way to making people feel a bit more comfortable and make the process a little bit more transparent. Now, the fact that you're using dollar figures as opposed to card checklists themselves raises more problems because then it comes down to, okay, which pricing are you using as part of your you know, value checklist, right? Are you using it at the price you bought it for or are you using it at today's comps? Does that mean you're going to have to update it all the time? Are you being accurate with the pricing you're using there? Are you making those numbers up? That's where you know, you're probably going to get a bit more problem um, with people pushing back against you, but at least at the minimum, you putting that in place is going to make things a bit more transparent for potential buyers and all that sort of stuff. And I urge you, if you are going to do that, put it into your comments, put it in your description, put it on screen. Don't shy away from it because one of the big problems you have had, as I'll reference some clips now from other videos, is that... Towns, well, we had this concept, thought it'd be fun, where we make a 50-spot mystery box break. One card in this box, guaranteed downtown, 350 bucks. We wanted to do it for 400 bucks. We're doing 350 at the show because we're just starting off. The floor is around like 100 to 150. Average is around like 3 to 5. And then ceiling is 2K. We just sold out. We just ran... Don't look. Um, the, floor, the floor of the DT is probably around like a hunch. And then the ceiling is very high. Like, we have like T-Law downtowns and shit like that. A lot of gold downtowns, a lot of black Pandoras. Um, but yeah, the low, like, with downtowns, it's either you hit or you don't. It's either you hit like $125 one or you smack one that's like $1,500 plus. Um, you know, when you've mentioned the floor and the average pricing and all that sort of stuff, it changes every time you mention it within the stream. It changes when you mention it within, within your videos and people are commenting this in your videos and saying the same sort of thing, right? So it's sort of wishy-washy. So again, you can understand why people are really confused when these crap cards are coming out. If you're going to be using these values, you need to stick to it and make sure they're accurate, right? Because otherwise you're going to get pushed back again. Now, 
The other thing that's worth calling out is the reason why a card checklist with the exact cards in there is the way to go. And it makes it so much easier for the breaker themselves is that it gives the customer the opportunity to try and price out the comps for that card. All right, so I know you want to try and sort of make it so people get surprised when they do get a card, but you're making yourself so much more work by um, not doing it right. You're going to get so much more havoc and all that sort of stuff off the back of it and hate and all that sort of thing. Now, you might be okay with dealing with it, but you know it's better for a customer to see the exact card because they can look it up and price it themselves and then not ask questions about the pricing that you've put in in your value checklist, um, as I alluded to a little bit earlier. We're trying to fucking make this a much more professional operation. I'm not trying to get sympathy, but if you really have ever been in our live streams and like been in the chat, hanging out, you would know that whenever people get skunked, I always take care of them. I'll give them cards on top for free out of my personal collection. Now, this is a really interesting point. Now, the rumors around Backyard Breaks has been that the PC cards, they do hand out as gratuity gifts to, to people when they've got scammed or screwed over, I should say not scammed, in a pack or a break. They'll give them something and that thing they've given them is actually already priced into the break itself, right? So it looks like they're giving you a nice gift, but in reality, you've already paid for it. You just haven't known about it. And that could be the case here or Justin could be being genuine. Now, the thing I will say to Justin here, right? If you've got somebody paying $1,100 into a repack box, right? And the card they're getting out of there is only worth 100, 200 bucks, right? And then you're giving them another one to $200 card on top. Is that really the big favor that you're making it out to be? This person has just lost $700. Now, again, not everything is always going to be profitable, but you can understand why that gift might seem a little bit hollow, right? Why people might not be taking you seriously when you're doing that, right? Those are the optics of the situation. You might be being genuine, but given all the transparency issues, given the complaints you're getting, you can understand why people take that sort of gift with a grain of salt, right? And again, you might be being genuine, but you can understand where people are coming from when they basically hate on you for doing it. I do that stuff all the time. We're trying to build a good community and I know just like watching like some clips of people hitting the floor doesn't look that good. But people have hit big shit. People have hit Lamar Jackson, PSA rookie downtown 10. Out of our 370. Now I will say when I did watch the lives, I saw like 95 plus percent of cards coming out that were dog shit. And from what people told me about the live that was made private, it was more of the same, if not worse than the other two. So we didn't see it in those and he gives an ex explanation now, but again, it's hard to know whether that's actually holding strong and, and is genuine or not. 25 box hit a T-Law Immaculate RPA. All tons of shit. Yeah, of course, like it doesn't look good. Like if you watch clip after clip after clip of people hitting the floor, but then this is also a very real thing that I'm going to like level my ego with. We don't sell as much as everyone else does. We don't go on live and sell out 50 boxes in a night. Realistically, we'll go live for like six hours and sell like six boxes. If there Now, this is a very fair point. It doesn't sell a whole lot. You watch those lives, not much action is happening. Now, could this be the reason why you don't see the big hits? Sure, but from outside looking in, when people are already questioning you, they might be saying, well, you've taken the hits and they're not actually on the table, right? Because you're not selling everything out. It's the end of, end of the discussion, right? Because maybe you're not doing things above board. Now, if he is being genuine, it would be nice for Justin, as I saw in one of the comments today, for him to show one of the hits within the boxes, you know, at the end of the live to say, guys, you could have got this if you busted it open today. And obviously not mark the boxes or anything like that. He would have to open them all to find the one that he wants to show off. But it would be nice to to do that right. Otherwise, people are going to ask you the questions they're asking you. It's hard to believe when you're saying, you know, there are big hits in here, but we're not actually seeing any of them actually come out, right? And another point he says, we have this product where it's just one of ones. It's a guaranteed one of one. It's my favorite product. Out of all the options we have, we have juice boxes, high-end boxes, guaranteed downtown boxes, and a one of one box. The one of one box is my favorite. Yes, you can technically go comp the cards that are in there. Some of the cards, I'm not gonna even lie, a lot of the cards that are in the one of one boxes, the shields, it's very hard to get those at shows. I am the person who bought them on eBay. Those comps you see are me. <laughs> so yes, those comps are, are what they are. But the thing is with one of ones, comps get a little weird because you have the only one. Say a card is only 200 bucks, right? But it's not like it's numbered to 99 where you can wake up and then that card is to resell and be lower so what he sort of talks to here i skipped you know the first minute or so you can go back and watch it yourself is the one of one box that he does sell and what he does say is yeah the comps you're seeing for these one of ones are a lot lower than the price of the box itself but they are a one of one right they're rare people want them so you can sort of sell them for a lot more and he gives a few examples of some cases where he bought stuff for a, a lot cheaper and sold them for a lot more money right he was making a lot of money selling one of ones and that position you know, is fine and it does make sense from that perspective. But again, you can understand why people are getting upset when they're paying a lot of money for a one of one box. I think it was like 700 bucks or whatever it was. And they're getting one of ones where they can see the comps for one or $200, right? And you can understand why people are getting upset about that, irrespective of whether you think you can make a big return off the selling of that, you know, one of one yourself. Had you bought it for one or $200, the person paying 700 bucks for that one to $200 card is not going to get you know, a big return ever again, right? They'd be lucky to make 50% of their money back. So 
again, I can understand where you're coming from, but from a repack perspective, that's where the context would be really good for the buyer to understand what's actually in there. And if you want to have that gamble aspect, like I said a bit earlier, make it a bit more transparent and then everybody's happy. The other day I sold 10 one one shields for over comps. I know that sounds insane, but it happened. And that's why I love that show because even if like say you quote unquote hit a floor card in the one one you could still set the price at whatever the fuck you want because you have the only one. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Hold on, I gotta get dog in the vid. Thank you guys so much for watching. So that is sort of it for his uh, response to me. I thought it was, you know, pretty interesting. There's a lot of things that he did in fact talk to there. Um, this video looks like it's going for a lot longer than what I thought. So I do apologize. Try and cut some things down. I'll play some things here and there, but it's just an interesting one. I think if you watch these guys' vlogs, it's pretty easy to see why he rubs so many people the wrong way because he's literally peak influencer and he's peak influencer in the sense that, like I said in the last video, he had a pretty big and successful YouTube channel in the influencer space. So he's approaching cards with that same mindset where it looks like it's all about the money and all that sort of thing. Now, I did have a lot more that I wanted to dunk on this guy with, but I'm probably going to hold back um, to see how he actually goes when it comes to you know him fixing his repacks and how he's you know going to start approach selling it and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is going to be one of those things that I'll talk to if, if things get a bit spicy with the guy again, because you check out even his vlogs and there's a lot of things that are happening there that raise a heck of a lot of eyebrows. So do we take what he's saying here as being genuine or do we take it with a grain of salt? I'm pretty open about the whole thing. I'll let you guys let me know down in the comments below. Um, I mentioned in a few comments and I think I mentioned in my triplicate video yesterday that you know whether he's a scammer or whether he's being genuine is sort of irrelevant. The reason why I'm saying that is because his business is now impacted, right? Because he's now had to go ahead and, and implement things to make things more transparent for his customers. And the fact that he's made things more transparent means people might be a bit more hesitant when they actually see how big the gap between, you know, the floor is versus the price of the box itself, right? If he's basically coming out and saying, well, the floor here is $100, right? Or $150 bucks in an $1,100 box. I think you're going to get a lot more people shying away from actually buying that thing in the first place, which if he is a scammer, now he's impacted, right? Or if he is being genuine, okay, it sucks, but you know your customers are going to be better off, and that's the most important thing when it comes to buying and selling your customers, especially your subscribers that are clearly watching you and they enjoy you as a content creator and they're liking you and they're buying into all this stuff. They don't like being taken advantage of, and whether you're doing that intentionally or unintentionally, it's happening, right? So you sort of need to look out for them. So let's sort of see what comes next. Let's see if he fixes this sort of stuff, but... Um, you know, it's not a threat in any way, shape, or form, but there's definitely a lot more information about this guy that I'm probably going to talk to, depending on how things go. Now, I also need a bit more information, which is why I've not talked to some of those things yet, but if you have any, please share it with me. But I thought, all in all, you know, it was a good response. You can believe him whether you, know, you can buy into it or whatever you want, but um, it's sort of good to see somebody at least say, you know what, I'm going to take some accountability. Now, again, he could be doing that for show, like I mentioned many times now. But it is what it is. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.